this is Thunder of Connemara, seven year old. Um, I think he's seven, thereabouts anyway. He's been on the list to come in for a while, but you know, we've been very busy. So we're on the A30 now, which is a busy old road. It's a good road for training from the point of view that because it's very hilly, it's like a helter skelter. Um, or like a roller coaster, I mean, it goes up and down. So, go on, baby, there we go. You can see that, um, like that one there, for instance, you know, flashing lights, no trouble at all. Um, okay, he's very good, but he's a bit quirky, so he's a little bit off the wall. You know, he's one of them, like, just like people, you know, some people you can't just a big old truck like that you know this. but a very 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 good worker you know he sets a pace and he'll keep going if you don't interfere with that so what I mean is if it if it suits you for him to travel at this speed yeah um, that's lovely but I mean obviously he doesn't know how far he's going so you've got to judge it a bit for him, you know. But if I asked him to come back now, just with a little tap, steady, my baby. Just straight away, you can hear he changes. You know, come down to a slow trot. Yeah. So he's very good. He's a little bit... I mean, I, we don't accept it. But he's found it a little bit difficult. He wants to come out the yard... And, you know, his attitude is, let's get on. He loves to go out, you know, he enjoys going out. How do we know that? Well, he put his head down. It was quite funny, actually, because he put his head down to have his harness put over his head, you know, his collar, etc. But he had a... I don't know the, the, you know, the ins and outs, but he was somewhere else and uh, to be trained, as far as I understand from what the owners told me. And they said um, that they didn't know whether he was suitable. Well, he came back from there. Now, this is only what, you know, I've been told. He came back there with a broken tush. So one of his teeth were broken. So, I mean, obviously I don't know what happened. It could be, you know, he just... But it's quite hard to break a uh, tush. Just the mere shape of it, you know. Um... So, I, you know, honestly don't know. So we've had him for a few weeks. Now, he was riding, being ridden, but we've obviously taken him to a different level. So he can be ridden in heavy traffic. He'll go and stand up on the motorway bridge, um, go for a river, around the arena, all them things, you know, that we normally do, he can do. So that respect is good but these Connemaras I like this though they they're a good workers I suppose it's bred in them you know you'd have to say so you've got a great big Arctic, Arctic coming down here now you know it must look like a block of flats to this horse must have come flying towards you um, and obviously he's not hanging about this lorry come up baby um, and this, this is a look it's a good one this one see that don't see, you don't see many of them about a flatbed like that so that's quite pleasing but he'll just keep the same speed and he'll keep his line that's good now the chap who owns him lovely fella nice fella um, and it's the same thing with anybody really but it's got to, you've got to do it to the best of your ability to suit that particular person, do you know what I mean? How they go. So that's nice, nice. You won't hear that on the thing, but as it's got turning round, that uh, concrete mixer there, making a big old sloshing noise, you know, just like any. You know, if you've got a little mixer yourself and you're knocking up uh, concrete, you know, and what noise it makes, well, that makes the same, but with these cameras that don't come out, it's not very good at picking up sound. So 
so this is a long old drag we're going. I like this road, as I say, because it's just like um, a roller coaster. So you could, the lorry could come up now, and it looks like it's coming out of the ground. It's coming up on the lift, you know. But he don't care. He'll just go on doing his own thing. And I can, you know, let go of the range. He's not going to go anywhere. And he'd be same going downhill as he would coming up, you know. He'll keep his line. Come on, baby, shut up. There's nothing on no, there's nothing on him at all, you know. And I'll show you in a minute going down here, we'll do the same thing. He's as good as gold. But it's not whether I can drive him, it's whether the owner can. That doesn't mean I'm not saying like this, but what the owners have to understand is that when they're here, um, you know, it's like um, they're at work. Well, every day really, every day they're doing some sort of training. Even if it wouldn't be in a car, it might be just groundwork, even though they might have been here for three or four weeks. It might be doing groundwork, you know, just going back over what you've already done, make sure it's consolidated, um, you know, in their head. So you just see him going along there, he's as happy as can be. And he, like, he, he's just a nice, nice pony. But he is a bit quirky. Um, I don't know how to describe it really because you'd say to me, well, what more could you ask for? And you couldn't ask for more. You know, he's lovely. But the way you, you know, make contact with him, you know, he, he's, the way you hold the reins, I think, I just don't know. I really don't know and I cannot condemn anybody and I'm certainly not doing that but when he come back from the other wherever he was at with a broken tooth you just wonder what had happened it might be you know just one of them things that happened but he will not he does not like to take his bridle he doesn't like and you have to open his mouth physically by putting your hand in the side of his mouth to open it to get him to take the bit. Now, and that has never, it has improved somewhat. So, as I said to you when you're starting, putting the harness on, drops his head down, he's lovely. So when you put the harness over his right behind his ears, you see him shake it down his neck, you know, get it in place. Um, he never refuses his harness, he tightens his girth up, do anything about him. Don't, he comes out and then he's straight at the, you know, when he's in his stable, you put it on, he's got his head over the stable door, come on in, let's go. We always bridle him up outside. Um, only because safety reasons with young horses, you don't want them to be coming past any obstruction that might be in the stable. Like we have a high lift dumper, for instance, to pick the muck up. Well, you don't want him getting his body caught on that. So, you know, for whatever reason, you know, one horse puts his head over the stable door, makes him jump a bit, or he squeals at him, or something like that, and he ends up bumping into something. No good. So we always put the bridle on outside. Um, obviously, at latter stages of training, you can bridle him anywhere, you know, or harness him anywhere. It really doesn't matter. But it just seems a bit... Um, makes you wonder a bit that you take the harness any way you like. You could literally throw it over his back. He just doesn't care at all. But he don't want that bridle. Now, I know the tooth is all right, although it's broken off. It's all right. So there is no infection. There's no crack going down the tooth that would give him and there's no you know inflammation there or anything like that at all so you don't know what's happened um and i'm not condemning anybody where he was never do that because i don't know i don't know i can only tell you what i've been told to come back with a broken tooth well it happened some somehow or the other and the man said to him that he didn't think he was suitable you know for the job so I don't know. The other thing is, when the owners come, you've got to say to them, look, 
this is how I treat him, which is fair, yeah, fair, kind, but firm. When you ask them to do something, they need to do it. So if I say to him now, right, just like this, get and cut, steady. I want him to come slow right up, steady, too steady, and he'll come back to a walk. Can you see? And he'll walk on there until I tell him different. And that, you know, is, is what it's all about. So he's going down the A30, he's just strolling down here as though it's a country lane. Um, this used to be like the main road going down into Devon and Cornwall. So, the West Country. So you can see him just walking along here, he's perfectly happy. I was just waiting for a lorry to come by, I could hear it, but it turned off. <laughs> um, must have gone into a farm. And now if I say to him, come on baby, jig, 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 trot. Then say to him, trot on. He's going downhill now. As I said, to you, he knows his job inside out. There's the rain slack on his back. He's not speeding up. He's just holding that back. Yeah. You know, he's holding it on his tugs. Yeah, he don't need to use his bridging, although it's, you know, fair slope. So he's not concerned about the traffic at all. Very happy little fella um, so when the, when the people come as long as they and they're sensible people and they're not a silly um, I, I suppose what I'm trying to say is they've got to get to know him again although he's because he, they have strong influence from where he is being trained isn't it obviously so we just uh, hope that they can you know take you drive him up this road then I'll be really happy, fine. Because this is a dodgy road. And you say, well, why would you take them up there? Because any road, any road, can become dodgy in two seconds. People say, well, I only go around the country lanes. Well, the dust cart's got to go around there. If it's country lanes, you're going to get a tractor and trailer, possibly, you know, farm machinery in general, and big lorries taking, you know, straw and hay off the fields. So... That. And then obviously you get all the vans now that we perhaps didn't have before from people like Amazon and that that people order stuff and then you've got your all your supermarkets you've got vans going around doing deliveries so you know your country lane becomes as busy as well becomes a lot busier than it used to be put it that way. So I know this is a stupid thing to do but I can drop them reins and let them go on up there and take no notice. I could just go. Oh, he's a lovely little boy. So I just mentioned his towel there. So we've got his towel plaited up, and in the end of his towel, below his actual dock, yeah, so the end of his spine, he's got a piece of elastic threaded through and put onto his bridging. Now, I wouldn't recommend um, anybody do that. It's something I do because he... He used to swish his towel and get it over the reins. When he stalls, or when he goes to the toilet, then, you know, when he's passing motion, you know, the correct word is when he's stalling, then what he'll do is he'll put his towel right over his back. Well, when he drops it down, you know, when he drops it down, he catch your rein. Now, if you're sitting up above and your reins are up here, you're all right when you're sitting down low according to what vehicle you got um, then you know that could be a problem so what we do is put that so there's complete freedom in his towel as you can see yeah complete freedom jogging it about there happy as anything 
And the funny thing is, if, if you do it right, you mustn't have it too tight, you mustn't have it too loose. And that's why you can't recommend people do it, you know, you can do it at their own choice, but you've got to get it right, because you could irritate the horse, and, you know, have him kicking or being upset in some way, if you don't get it right. So I suppose that's a bit of experience, it is, you know, what can I say, it's experience. So, that's it. Good baby. But we'll be able to take that off, and they get used to holding their towel just off their quarters and don't swish it about so much. And they're content with it just flopping from side to side, you know. Just swinging. I don't feel the need to, to swish it around all over the place. You know? And that, that can be a thing like with, with youngsters. They do that. It's like someone who... Uh, skin around their fingernails or you know tapping like this or doing something like a sign of nerve sometimes in all that's it that's all it is so there you go up the A30 not a bad day um, it's been pouring down the rain <laughs> but we're heading to Wall Stock Bridge we'll probably stop and have a coffee give them a little blow and a drink um, and then we'll make our way back home so, but this round trip will be somewhere around, I don't know, 12 miles, 12, 14 miles. But we're not pushing him on, we don't do that. That's his pace, that's where he likes to be. And that suits me fine on this road. As long as I can do that with two fingers, yeah? Eddie, my baby boy. With one of our new Wendering rubber bits in, can you see? what he's wearing, these new rubber bits, absolutely fantastic. As long as he comes back like that for me and doesn't react to any traffic or anything like that, I'm over the moon. Okay, babe, trot, babe, trot him, good lad. Yes, you are, you young rascal. Come on, my sugar plum. <laughs>